Well, I had a great time at Millbrook. I mean, it was a place to introduce people to the psychedelic experience in the most beautiful way possible. It was a center for people to come from every walk of life, from the highest aristocrat and noble and royal person down to the dirtiest hippie. Everybody came there. It was a mecca for psychedelics. LSD was a tremendous leveler. No matter what level of society you came from, when you turned on with someone from another member of society, that class division did not cloud your vision. You could see that person clearly, and you could see them as a friend. Out there, high, no one was going to bother you. You were miles from the main gate. My experience at Millbrook was not about curing ill people, but making well people weller, about moving into the cosmic understanding of our existence here on life. We're not just dumb bees brought to walk in one path all of our lives. We are here to fly. My training was anthropology, but I had been involved growing up in the laboratory my whole life because my father was a chemist. So all of this was familiar and easy for me. I studied it, I became a chemist. Now the question is, how do you get it out with the starting materials that have been left over, with the isomers and byproducts, and how do you get that all out so that you will have only like 99.9% .9 LSD. So that means you have to recycle that material again. And so you recycle and recycle and recycle. And the process of making very pure LSD is extremely tedious. And uh, we were making large amounts and we were able to purify in large amounts to 100 gram crystallizations. That's a million doses. So why not support our brothers and sisters, same age, but had been drafted and dragged, you know, almost in chains to be killed in Vietnam? Why not give them the same medicine that was causing the movement? I mean, I've been convicted many times. I've spent time in 14 different prisons. All of this has happened to me as a result of my devotion to psychedelics. Uh, uh, so, am I a criminal? Of course I'm a criminal. In memoriam of Nicholas Sand, born May 10th, 1941, and transitioned April 24th, 2017. May 10th, hey, that's my birthday. Sands had a standard, and here is one of his quotes. When LSD is made in high purity, a certain magic obtains for the person who journeys with preparation and intention. Purity of intention and purity of product go hand in hand to produce a transcendent trip. There are no guarantees which corridors will open for you, but the odds are better with intelligent choices. For chemists also, the mere intention toward purity is transformative. A path unto itself. This is alchemy. Nicholas Sand. Elsie Grammer plays Chuck Smith. Jonathan Rumi plays Lonnie Frisbee in the Jesus Revolution. Filming 
has started in Cosa Mesa, California. And who exactly is Jonathan Rumi playing? Well, he's playing this man who took this hit of orange sunshine. Here's the story. Sometime in 1967, at the age of 17, Lonnie Frisbee took another trip into Taquitz Canyon. There he took a hit of LSD, removed his clothing, and began to pray in a relatively unorthodox but sincere manner. When the Lord called me, I went. I was going into the desert, and I was taking all my clothes off, and I'm going, God, if you're really real, reveal yourself to me. And one afternoon, the whole atmosphere of this canyon that I was in started to tingle and get light, and it started to change, and I'm just going, uh-oh. I didn't want to be there. He would later recount that it was here that God came to him in a vision and told him of the unique role that he was soon to play. It thrills my soul to see all the kids coming and following after Jesus. I kind of relate to John the Baptist down in the wilderness, baptizing in the River Jordan sometimes. It's really neat to see how each one reacts in a different way, but I can feel the presence of God coming down upon me and upon the person being baptized and just all over the place. And I, I immediately started to grow my hair a little bit longer than it was, so I, I really looked like Isaiah's grandson. <laughs> I wore St. Francis of Assisi shirts with hoods on them and wore robes and things like that. The people tell me that I'm trying to look like Jesus. I can't think of anybody else I'd rather look like. <laughs> idea was that each one of those say 12 people would go out and have 10 or 12 people and show them how this how this works everybody you know go out and tell everybody your workplace your school your family anybody get them to take LSD with you the obvious thing was we need to know how to make as much acid and get it to as many people as we possibly can felt it was our duty to turn the world on. We really, really, truly believed that it's, it's our mission. We were called upon to do this. It felt like that to all of us. We said, this is something, this is what I have to do. Their mission was accomplished. Or this documentary is tied into another documentary. Frisbee, the life and death of a hippie preacher. We will now prove their acid got into his hands, which caused a major movement of both the Vineyard and Calvary Chapel churches across the land. Where did they get the LSD? Well, we will find that it ties in to this documentary, Orange Sunshine. Here we see at the time she met Lonnie, Connie lived in a commune in Silverado Canyon, California, with a group called the Brotherhood of Eternal Love. What started as a commune with several homes in the area morphed into a major drug distribution channel for LSD and hashish. They dealt LSD for Timothy Leary, Connie recounts. They were the main people bringing hashish into Southern California from Afghanistan. Chuck is known globally as the father of the Jesus movement. And you can make a case for contemporary Christian music, which we all enjoy. We heard some of it tonight. And even contemporary praise and worship began in the early 70s at Calvary Chapel of Costa Mesa. If that was all Chuck ever had a hand in, that would be more than enough for one guy in one lifetime. But Chuck was just getting started. 
thousands of young men, now not so young, uh, went out around the country and around the world and started Calvary Chapel style churches. There are over 1,400 Calvary Chapel style churches in the world today. So it's amazing.